Michigan Out of Doors Magazine's OD is brought to you by Michigan United Conservation Clubs, protecting Michigan's rights to hunt, fish, and trap for 75 years. And by Williams Gun Sight. Located in Davison, Williams Gun Sight has mid-Michigan's largest selection of used guns with over 2,000 in stock every day. Check out the website to view inventory and prices. And by MSU Federal Credit Union, helping members achieve their dreams since 1937. Country Smokehouse of Almond, offering the best quality and satisfaction in homemade meats, sausage, and jerky, it's a Michigan destination. Check out the website at countrysmokehouseinc.com. All right, so here it is, uh, mid-May, and uh, Gabe and I are out on a southern Michigan lake looking to find some smallmouth on beds. And you're going to have to bear with us a little bit because there's a theme to this show that may not be quite what you think but with all the actions lately around MUCC and around the state regarding you know, hunting and fishing rights, we thought there's really no better way to illustrate why this stuff matters than to go out and do some of the things that we love and as we go along explain why we're able to do these things and how everything that's been happening in the last few weeks, how it really does matter even if you don't care to hunt wolves or care to hunt doves or care to hunt bear. There's something that you like to do and uh, hopefully today we can illustrate why this stuff that MECC does matters uh, to everybody who values the outdoors. All right, so we, we're out here looking for these smallmouth on beds and it's clear water, shallow water, and these fish get fish pretty hard, so they're spooky. So we're just kind of going through this um, gravelly rocky area looking for fish and we got our eyes on one uh, but we need to let him settle down or her whichever it is because it can see the boat so it wasn't all that long ago that what we're doing is was illegal um, we're out here before the regular bass season the catch and keep season this is part of the catch and release season um, it was not allowed you can come out and fish for these uh, bedded fish and the reason it wasn't as allowed um, were two reasons one there was a certain group of, of anglers who thought it's just not ethical, it's not right to fish for these fish on the beds. And their reasoning was it was going to do harm to the population, that it was going to prevent them from spawning and, and reduce our, our bass population. You can make the argument however you want to, whether it's the right thing, if it's something you would do. And, and ethics is a funny thing. Everybody has a little bit different uh, set of those. But when it comes down to the decision, it should be based on science. Science showed pretty overwhelmingly that fishing for these fish on the beds, as long as you put them right back in, is not doing any harm to the population. So we're gonna find this fish and catch him, and we'll uh, continue explaining a little bit about why where it's so important to let science dictate those decisions. It's not the big one, but it's another one. We came here for. Don't tape this, wrong species. Well, we got a GoPro camera on this bed with a smallmouth on it. We're trying to catch it in front of the GoPro and Mr. Rocky came in here and bit my bait. So what we're doing is taking out the uh, obstructions to the quest. That fish is locked on that bed pretty good, so we're just trying to catch him with that GoPro camera looking at him, it'd be pretty cool. 
it's right in front of her, but it's not. It's just not a lot of... Oh, I missed her. Oh, she bit it, I missed. That's good, though, because now we might have her a little bit agitated. Well, finally, it's not the biggest fish in the lake, but we worked it hard. I can't wait to pull that GoPro camera out and see what the footage was like, but that's pretty classic bed fishing on fish that have been, you know, fished for. They're going to be a little bit spooky and you just have to keep irritating them and irritating them and changing baits. And so we'll get, it, get this fish back in the water and catch another one. Well, that is a ball. It's probably one of my favorite ways fish. I love smallmouth fishing anyway, but to be able to see them and react. And like I said, not that long ago, this was not legal. And you know, we went over the reasons why it wasn't legal. There are definitely people who watch this show today and send us emails and say, you shouldn't be doing that because I don't think that's the right thing to do. Well, that's the beauty of a free country. <laughs> there are always opinions. There are always different things. That's why when it comes to, to wildlife management, we have to rely on science. We don't want to hurt these populations. We don't want to do anything to put the future at jeopardy. I would certainly be the last person to ever do that. But the science was readily available that says catch and release fishing has no impact while they're on the beds, you know, on reproduction. So we need to allow scientists, wildlife managers, to make those decisions. Well, about a week ago, MUCC and its partners put the wraps on a piece of legislation that fully enacts Proposal G and requires that science always be used to manage our wildlife populations. The reason that legislation was necessary is because the Humane Society of the United States, which is a rabid anti-hunting organization, didn't like the fact that we were going to use hunting as a means to manage Michigan's wolf population. So they paid $350,000 to a group out of California to come in and collect signatures to put the issue on the ballot. This is not an issue of should people be able to vote on whether we hunt wolves or not. We've already voted on that with Proposal G and we've already have a state constitution that says we have the ability to hunt, fish, and trap and that's what the legislation ensured. It has language in it that says we have those rights. We need science to manage our wildlife populations because it shouldn't be up to an individual person to say this is wrong or that is wrong. We need to allow the science to do that, and this is a classic example. What we're doing was not allowed. Science came in and said, it's not going to do any harm. Those who want to fish in that manner should be allowed to. I can't think of a better way to illustrate why it is that we just spent months, hundreds of hours, defending our rights to hunt, fish, and trap from people who think, you should think the way I do. Well, I'm sorry, I don't think the way you do. What's happening right here is I'm getting my butt kicked by this fish. I've got her, I mean, it's locked on this bed. I've tried a drop shot and now a tube. I can get her to nose down on it, but the bite ain't coming. And I don't know. And she actually chased it that time. She's really chasing it. She chased that all the way to the outside of the rocks. Got him. Finally. Oh, baby. Not a bad fish either. Bad 
Daddy. There we are. That's a pretty nice one. You got water all over my face. Good thick fish. Heck yeah. It just took a lot of casts. Different bait changes. All right, let's put her back in. Well, we've been talking all day about, you know, science-based wildlife management and letting scientists and biologists determine how our fish and game are managed. That doesn't mean we don't have input. It doesn't mean that we're not involved. We should be very involved with the process. We just caught that fish. It's been 15 seconds. That fish is back on the bed no worse for wear um, you know there's obviously th there's things that I don't like to do I mean there's there's types of hunting that aren't really for me but does that mean I should say you can't do it I don't think that's the case at all so that's why it's very important to manage based on sound science and why it's super important to have groups like MUCC like Ducks Unlimited like Michigan Bear Houndsmen like UP or the B UP Bear Houndsmen and Michigan Bear Hunters and uh, Michigan Hunting Dog Federation, all those groups that spend their time and their effort and their money defending our rights to hunt, fish, and trap, and making sure that when the Humane Society of the United States, you might not even known who they were uh, when they came in here, and you might have said, I'm not going to hunt wolves, what does it matter? Because it has nothing to do with hunting wolves. They don't like us. They don't like hunters. They don't like anglers. They don't like trappers. And in fact, just after we got done kicking their butt, the very first thing they said is, we're gonna run another referendum, and this time we'll probably come after something like trapping. So, if you don't like wolf hunting, maybe you like trapping. And if you don't like trapping, maybe you like bow hunting. If you don't like bow hunting, maybe you like catching smallmouth off beds. The bottom line is, we need to all stand shoulder to shoulder with this, and I think MUCC is a great way to start. Um, memberships are not very much money. You get a pretty good magazine, and most importantly, you get your voice lent to an organization that does the things that really matter. So I think that's enough talking for one day. Gabe spent far too much time behind that camera. I can see three or four more fish right now. I think we go out and exercise our Michigan given right, thanks to legislation MECC passed, helped pass, and catch fish. Just had him strike with this new color. So we're putting it right back in the bed and dragging it up there. And I can see this one a lot better. And I can see him looking at it. Right there, right by him. And bang! Oh, and I missed him. He just dunk, dunk, <laughs> and coming out. We'll get, we'll, he's, he's definitely not, he or she is definitely not happy now. So it's a matter of time and reflexes, I think. Oh. I overreacted, it was nosing down and I thought it was gonna hit it. You know, that's, that right there is a classic. That's the benefit of the drop shot. We had a little ripple. I really couldn't see the fish. Felt that tick and just lift the rod and they're there. I mean, it's not like with a tube where you've got to bust through a bunch of plastic and you've got to bite a giant bait. I don't catch that fish if I'm not using a drop shot. Little bitty hook. Big results though. Yep. 
bad little fish. It never gets old. <laughs> never. Uh, that's a pretty nice one too. question that it bit it. Got a little bit of a bloody tail from cleaning out that bed. So definitely a female there I would say. Nice healthy fat fish. I'll put it right back in and this fish has been caught before too. Right there's that. Further proof that catch and release is a-okay. And it's biting me. It's mad. 